All right, church, there is an urgency that you see here in Ephesians 5, about halfway through the chapter, an urgency, an importance. There's something important happening, something urgent happening, something that matters right now for you and I to be doing. That's the, that's the sense that you get. As you read through chapter 5, there's very practical stuff about, hey, live this way. Don't live that way. Don't hang out with people who are sinning. Don't be part of it. Make sure it's not part of your life. Okay, and then here in verse 15 down through 21, it gives it a sense of urgency to it. Okay, let me read this. We'll look at it. Here's what it says. It says, look carefully how you walk. It means how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So right here, there's there's something called a parallelism going on. There's two different ways of living that run that, that, that it, it discusses here. The wise way and the unwise way. Okay? Verse 15, look carefully how you walk, how you live. That's wise. Okay? And then he says, not as unwise, but as wise. So he's he's look carefully how you live is wise. That's what he's saying. Okay? Not looking carefully at how you live would be unwise. Just kind of living your life, going by whatever seems to be happening, and this is the new thing, and I'll do this, and uh, this is what I'm up to now. That would be unwise looking carefully. That means paying attention to what's going on in your life and looking at your life and saying, am I actually living for the Lord? That's wise. Unwise is the opposite. Okay? Verse 16 Again, is going to, and 17 are going to say the same thing, but verse 16 is going to tell you why. Okay? Uh, making the best use of your time because the days are evil. Why should I live as wise? Why should I look carefully at how I live? Why should I make the best use of my time? Make the best use of your time is another parallel to being wise, to looking carefully at how you live. Why? Because the days are evil. Okay? Therefore, do not be foolish. That would be unwise. But understand what the will of the Lord is. Again, we're back at wise, being wise. Look carefully how you live. Understand the will of the Lord. Make the best use of your time. These are all wise. Unwise, therefore, is not looking carefully at how you live, not understanding the will of the Lord, and just being foolish. Okay? And all of it hinges in this little passage on the days are evil. Understand the time, because the days are are evil. Okay? Understand what the will of the Lord is. Make the best use of your time because the days are evil. All right? Now, do you live in evil days? That That's a question. The answer is yes. I don't know anybody who says, oh, everything's going great. Everything's fine. I'm really happy with how things are going. I don't know anybody saying that. It's, we, we live in evil days. And guess what, guys? That's not new. Ephesians was written almost 2,000 years ago. He said the days are evil then. All right, so don't gripe about it. All right, oh, look around and watch the news. Everybody's coming. It's bad. It's it's really bad. What a horrible thing. You know what? It is bad. Of course, sin lives in this world. Sin lives in you and me. Sin lives all over the place. Death is everywhere because sin's everywhere. The days are evil. This is not new. This is not something to gripe about. It's just the world in which we live. I'm not happy about it, shouldn't be happy about it, but if, listen, if all you do is gripe about how the days are evil, um, and just, you you watch the news, and you, we, we have a guy who comes to our, our uh, Tuesday Bible reading group, uh, in our men's group, and um, he said he used to go to a, there, there's a, another group of men who hang out at the same restaurant at the same time, and he's like, all they do is they watch the news and um, kind of talk about it and mostly complain about it. And he's like, you guys talk about your Bible, so I'm coming to your group. Because we, we all have the same basic framework. We watch the news. The news is mostly bad. The news gives you plenty to complain about. And so you do. If you if that's what you're here for, that's what you'll get. All right? And we choose not to. We choose to say, you know what? Of course the news is bad. That's not surprising. That shouldn't be surprising. Uh, you shouldn't have been putting your hope in the times we live in going well. Because why would they? Sin is all over the place. Why would you expect anything different? Okay, griping about it is, is basically meaning you're not taking it seriously. Griping means I'm complaining about it, and somehow by complaining, I've done my job. 
well, I don't like what's going on, and I made sure everybody knew it, and I complained, so my job here is done. As though that accomplishes anything, right? You know, as though griping about it gets anything done. Um, don't be unwise. Look carefully how you live. The days are evil. They've been evil. It's not new. They're going to be evil again tomorrow. Until Jesus comes back, the days are evil. The exact category of evil in which our time might happen to experience might not be quite the same as last generation or next generation, but evil's out there. Evil's always going to be out there until Jesus comes back. So we have a choice, and it lays it out as though it's a choice. Look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Make the best use of your time, okay? Don't be foolish. Like He wouldn't tell us these things if, um, if we couldn't help it. You can help it. Look carefully. Take care of how you live. Look carefully at it. Say, am I living wisely? Okay, if you're unwise and you don't understand the time and you're not doing it, then, then that means you're just living your life, going about your business, you know, do what seems right today. I'm not going to try to do anything bad. I'm just going to kind of go through my day and go on tomorrow, do the next thing. And the next day, do the next thing. If something happens that I don't like, I'll try to fix it or gripe about it or whatever. And if something happens that I do like, I'll say, great, awesome. And I'll move along with my life, and that's that. And that it would be very unwise. That would not be looking carefully at how you live. That would just be kind of living. And it's so easy to just kind of live. Have you ever driven down the highway and maybe on a long trip, but you just kind of realize, I don't know what mile marker I'm at. I don't know what exit number I'm at. I don't, I don't know what's happened for the past 20 minutes. <laughs> Have you ever done that on a road trip? Um, I don't mean fall asleep when driving. I mean, you've stayed in your lane. You've been safe the whole time. You're on the speed limit or close to it or whatever, but you just kind of spaced out and you didn't know what was going on. I was on a, a, a caravan last fall and um, we got to where we were going and um, the, we got talking and they said, what well, did you see that accident? And I was like, no, I didn't see that accident. What do you mean you didn't see the accident? That, the whole other lane was blocked. And, you know, the, we were on northbound. They were on southbound. And, and the whole thing was blocked. Oh, what a messy. Yeah, you didn't see that? And I was like, no, I didn't, actually. I, I was not living in awareness. I was not looking carefully at things. I was driving foolishly. I was just kind of staying in my lane, doing my own thing. And not, not, I was, wasn't looking around. I might've been talking, engaged in a conversation with somebody and probably was with three kids and a wife in a car. And probably was just, we were just probably just talking as a family and I was not paying attention uh, to that kind of stuff. I wasn't driving poorly. I didn't cause a wreck or anything. Just didn't see what was going on. You ever have that or, or in your day-to-day -day life? Like wh what did you eat for breakfast today? What did you do yesterday? Um, look back at your day and say, D did I live carefully today? Am, am I looking carefully at how I live and how I walk and what I do? Carefully means it means you're taking care to, to do it right. And, and you're doing it with urgency to it because it makes a difference because the days are evil. Not because the days are bland. If the days were bland, then go live a bland life and it won't make any difference. But if the days are evil and you're God's people and you're, you got a job to do, Let's be careful about this because there's a lot of sin out there. That's what it said, you know, before. Um, take no no part in unfruitful works of darkness, um, sexual immorality, all impurity, or covetousness must not even be named among you. Okay, like that's going to happen among you. Have no partnership with them, verse 7. That's going to happen among you unless you are proactively taking care not to. Okay, you have to carefully avoid that stuff or else it will just be there. The world we live in is saturated with sin and your mind is, is full of it. It take every thought captive. That means everything you're always having, you, you look carefully at it, okay? Be careful of how you do these things. It's unwise, it's foolish not to, it's wise to, okay? Uh, when we do that, I mean, verse 14, awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, Christ will shine on you. Awake, wake up! Like you're 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 living in, in a, a sleep. You're 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 asleep. R Romans uh, said this, you know, right? The the, the day is at hand. The night is almost gone. Right? We've we've got to wake up. We've got to step up. We've got to look up. We've got to be we got to be awake. All right. 
There is too much evil in the world happening on our watch, and God put us here now. This is our time. We talked about this often here in Ephesians and elsewhere. This is our time. He made you now. He didn't make you 100 years from now. He didn't make you 100 years ago. He made you now. He didn't make you um, uh, somewhere else. He made you here, and he made you now. So this is your time, and he made you to be awake. He made you to look carefully at how you live. He made you in an evil time so that you could be a light in that time, to expose it. Right? Verse 11, take no part in unfruitful works of darkness. Instead, expose them. That's not going to happen by accident. It's not going to happen just by you going through your life, you know, just kind of seeing what happens today. That, that, that takes activity on your part. That takes looking carefully at the world around you and saying, i got to expose some darkness. How am I going to do it today? How are you going to expose sin and evil and darkness today? How are you going to do it? What are you going to do? There's a... Uh, there's something for you to do. Okay, let's let's go move on to verse 18. It looks like in verse 18 that he's changing the subject. I don't think he is. Okay, do not get drunk on wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, this, it sounds like, oh, now we're going to talk about getting drunk. No, I don't think so. I think it fits directly in with this. Um, it obviously includes don't get drunk, but it's more than that. We got wake up, verse 14. We got arise from the dead, verse 14. We got, look carefully how you walk, verse 15. Not as unwise, but as wise. We got this contrast. Somebody who's asleep, somebody who's dead, somebody who's not looking carefully, somebody who is unwise. Okay, we've got all that. Another way of thinking of it is someone who's drunk. Is someone who's drunk living responsibly? Is someone who's drunk wide awake, alive, looking carefully at how they live? No, they're not. Or is someone who's drunk living wisely? No, they're living foolishly and unwisely, right? They're dead to the world. They're out of it. They're not participating in anything right. They're Even if they wanted to, they're drunk. They're not going to do a good job of it, right? Okay. So it's part of the same analogy of somebody who is not taking responsibility for their actions. Okay? And then there's another step. Don't get drunk with wine. Don't be unwise. Okay? Instead, for, for that's debauchery, which is like a whole step worse of, of unwise. All right? But instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. That's What's that about? Well, uh, that's about looking carefully. That's about arise from the dead. Christ will shine on you. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, back in chapter 1 of Ephesians, we saw a phrase like this. Um, I pray, remembering you in your, my prayers, verse 16 and 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you what? The Spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom. Who do you think that is? Okay, well, here he's saying to be wise. Where are you going to get wisdom? From the Spirit, right? Don't be drunk. Lead to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. He'll make you wise. Paul prayed in verse in chapter 1 that you would be wise, that you'd have the Spirit of wisdom, all right? Um, specifically, he prayed that um, the Spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. That sounds a lot like what he's saying in chapter 5, doesn't it? Wisdom, knowledge, know what the will of God is, understand what the will of the Lord is, verse 17 here of chapter 5. All right? Now, verse 19, he says, Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence to for Christ. All right? So, Instead of this unwise, dead, sleepy, look not looking carefully at, at your life, just kind of living your life, seeing what happens, instead of that, a drunkenness, instead of that dazed, confused, dull kind of life, instead of that, you've got wisdom. You've got the Holy Spirit himself, the spirit of wisdom. You've got a life with a purpose, with an urgency to it, with someone who is wide awake, who is standing up, waking up. And, and has urgency and purpose in your life, all right? Now, not only that, but now we're going to do it together. Let's get the whole church engaged. Because remember, Ephesians is about a church. It's about how to build up a church. And there's no way to build up yourself by yourself. The, the way God chooses to do it is through his people, the church. Okay, so how what, what should a church look like? It should be people who address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So church should be a place where worship is occurring, 
where you're building one another up in the Lord. And there's an urgency to it because the days are evil. And we are looking carefully at one another, at, at, at ourselves, and, and building one another up in Christ and being wise, and we're waking up, and we're filled with the Spirit, and we're not getting drunk, and we're not falling asleep, and we're not laying down and just kind of rolling over as the world does its evil stuff around us. We're alive to it. We're giving thanks proactively to the Lord, even though sometimes you have to give thanks by faith because you don't see the thing you're thankful for. Okay? Um, submitting to one another, verse 21, out of reverence for Christ. And that submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ, we're going to go specifically down to the, the marriage family unit. Uh, tomorrow we'll get into that about wives submit to your husband and submit one to another and this and that. It's, it's all part of the same framework here. Get it? Uh, so we'll get to that, to that tomorrow. But are you awake? Do you have an urgency? Do you have a purpose when you wake up in the morning to go do life purposefully and carefully and wisely? Are you, are you living that way? Because this, this, the days are evil, man. The days are evil. Griping about it is is meaningless. It's not going to help. It's not saying, oh, the days are evil. Oh, yeah, well, the days around here are evil, too. Like, people love to say that. They love to complain about how evil things are around them. Did you see what happened, you know, now? Did you see what they're doing in China? Did you see what the whatever? Like, people love to do that. And it's like, that's, we're not getting anywhere We've, we've got to we've got to be exposing darkness here. We've got a major purpose in this life that God's given us. All right, so I hope that helps you. I hope that sheds a little bit more light on what a church is even for, what it means to be a Christian and to live your life for Christ now in this evil time. God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll get into to marriage and husbands and wives, everybody's favorite little couple verses here in Ephesians 5. God bless you. I'll see you then.